those of you who don't, who don't know me, I'm Brad Shar, and I represent the third generation of the Shar family in the ownership of Bowie. Tonight's discussion will focus on creating and enhancing an art collection by promoting its growth in an appropriate way and through the preservation, monitoring, and presentation of works in the collection. And when I arrived at the house, rang the bell, she came to the door, and before I ever got across the threshold, she says, now remember, I want you to tell me everything that you think I should know about the works of art I've collected. I understand you know. So I walked in the door. This is the door. I walk in and hanging right here was a Winslow Homer watercolor that was entirely blue. Well, watercolors are particularly uh, 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 fragile and fade very easily. And blue, I think, is the last color to go. What to say? Well, I told her the truth. At which point, she started wiggling her hips and saying, how dare you come into my home and tell me that my Winslow Homer watercolor is faded beyond recognition. I said, would you like me to leave? Oh, no, I asked you to come here. But I never said another word. You know, condition is, in general, really subjective. And I think it's, uh, it's really important to bring somebody who knows what they're talking about to look at a painting you're interested in. Because just because something is, is torn or dirty doesn't mean it's, it's in terrible condition. Um, pretty much 90% of what you see in, in history books is, has, been, has been treated. But I guess the point is that you really just want to have somebody there to guide you on the right thing to buy. Yeah, how do you tell a client it's a bad picture? And there are now occasionally, st um, still occasionally, these great finds. You know, the Milton Avery that slipped in the frame and the, and the board is bad and, and you can't see it because it's dirty and you, you just take it out, take it out, take it out. <laughs> and it's taken out and you go put it back, put it back. <laughs> and don't, don't clean the glass and put it on the wall. And you hope that when the auction comes up, you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen so much because you have many competitors here that, mm -hmm. that beat you to it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd say frame. Frame, there's, framing is an entirely different, um, well, it's a an independent business, and it should be. It's an independent tool. You mm -hmm. have to think about the piece, its appropriate frame, and then the location. Mm -hmm. And you should have uh, good resources for that. Mm -hmm. You should be speaking to a great framer, and you should also be speaking to somebody who's working with the mistress, which is the is, house. Um, uh, sometimes it's the mistress, and sometimes it's the wife. It depends yes. who one calls. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, but I look at a whole uh, mise-en-scene, a whole vignette, and, I, and, I, and maybe a piece that the client has or the piece that the client's buying that, that, that they love or that is perfect, but maybe, to my eyes, slightly underscaled, slightly overscaled. And I think that we can address that to a certain extent with the framing. Um, and uh, the framing can add a, a, a layer of complexity and, and, and dynamism um, to, to the art and to the overall scene. I'm, I'm looking at it um, as part of a, one component, one important component of uh, a total work. I'd also like to know what, the, the most ridiculous frame that actually worked, you know, counterintuitively. If any of you have ever come across that. Yeah, every day we see an abomination <laughs> come, come into our, our, our doorway. So there are a lot of things that go into proper framing in my estimation and the most important thing is to have the dialogue between yourself and the and the um, custodian of that art. And we, we are now doing more and more condition reporting for auction houses for that reason because so many people complain about um, about the condition reports written by, by auction personnel and they should because they don't say anything. Um, <laughs> And so when I, you know, when I write a report, our name is on the report. So people will then call me and ask me about condition, which is what I want them to do, because I can answer them honestly. There is the, what I call the over the collector. Somebody will come in here and say, I've decided to collect. Well, what, what, are, what are you interested in? Well, I'm interested in a picture for over the mantle. No. Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> over the sofa, over the sideboard. Yeah. Over the bed, I need long and narrow over the bed, and <laughs> over the this, and over the that. It's what I call the over the collector. Yeah, I had literally someone phone me up and saying, I love this Mark Bradford, but it won't fit 
And I said, won't fit where? Well, where I want it to fit, the over. And I said, what if you thought of another place to put it? No, 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 but it's supposed to go there. (laughs) 